Ghost stories and other paranormal tales are a dime a dozen, but every once in a while you come across a story that's so bizarre that it defies explanation. The following five tales range from mildly creepy to completely terrifying and outrageous, yet they all have one thing in common. We simply cannot come up with a reasonable explanation for them. At all. The Hampton Court Palace in Surrey is thought to be one of the most haunted buildings in England. According to their website, the castle is officially haunted by at least three specters. Catherine Howard, the screaming lady in the haunted gallery, has been spotted multiple times over the years by palace workers and guests alike. Sybil Penn, the great lady of Hampton Court Palace, who has been spotted roaming the palace since her tomb was moved back in 1829. The palace's most notable haunting, however, has to be Skeletor, the creepy apparition that was caught on the palace's CCTV in 2003. Palace officials explain on their website, On three consecutive days, palace security staff were called to close one particular fire door near the palace's introductory exhibition. On the first day, CCTV footage showed the doors flying wide open with great force, but there was nothing to reveal why. On the second day, the same thing happened, but this time a ghostly-looking figure in period dress suddenly appeared on the screen and closed the doors. They add, the doors opened again on the third day, but there was no further sign of the ghostly doorkeeper. Is this the ghost of the palace's most famous resident, Henry VIII? I was living in a house in Laguna Beach that had been there since the 1920s. In its history, it had been a speakeasy, a brothel, and a house for smuggling illegal immigrants. One day, my new wife and I were having an argument. I can't even recall what it was about. She walked down the block to get a cup of coffee and cool off, and I was alone in the house. From my bedroom, I could look across the hall into the bathroom, then through the bathroom and down the other hall. I was standing at my dresser, and I just noticed movement out the corner of my eye and looked down there. There was, and honest to God, this gives me goosebumps just typing it, 17 years later, a black figure. It was maybe three feet tall, and it was only vaguely humanoid. It looked like black scribbles, like someone had scribbled a human shape, but the scribbles moved, like electricity arcing, that's the best way to describe it. There was no sound that I could remember. I distinctly remember when I saw it I wasn't afraid, just like, WTF? Then it noticed me looking at it. I can't say it turned around, it just focused on me I guess. Then I was scared. I didn't move, didn't scream, nothing. I was just frozen, because it just F asterisk asterisk king came at me, it rushed down the hall towards me. I have no idea what it intended, but as soon as it entered the bathroom, the door closest to me just slammed shut on it. Then I screamed. I yelled for my wife. She wasn't home. I went outside, into the daylight, and didn't go back in until she got home about 10 minutes later. Several years ago, when my daughter was just over three years old, my husband and I were watching a TV show about 9-11. It was on or around the anniversary of the event. My daughter, who was coloring nearby, looked up when the screen showed a plane hitting one of the World Trade Center buildings. She said to us, I died there. Then she just went back to coloring like she hadn't said a word. We had never talked to her about the concept of death and had never discussed 9-11 with her. Since then she has not said anything else about it, but now if something comes on TV about 9-11, she says, I don't want to watch this. My grandfather passed away just a few weeks after I was born. Never met the guy, never knew what he looked like. When I was five years old, 
I started to see this man in a rocking chair. I called him the rocking chair man. My parents thought it was that imaginary friend's stage, but it started to bug them when I told them every single day. They finally questioned me about it. I told them every detail I could remember and finally they showed me a picture of a man. It was my grandfather. To this day, I'm 22 now, every time I dream, he is in the background somewhere. I remember when I dreamed about my high school graduation and I looked at the stands and I saw him with my parents. I'd like to think that he's just watching out for me and being there when he's not really there. In 1984, a woman was sitting at home reading when she suddenly heard a very clear voice inside her head. The voice told her, please don't be afraid. I know it must be shocking for you to hear me speaking to you like this, but this is the easiest way I could think of. My friend and I used to work at the Children's Hospital, Great Ormond Street, and we would like to help you. After a series of medical tests, including psychological assessments, the patient was eventually diagnosed with a large benign meningioma, brain tumor. The voice continued to speak to her throughout the medical testing. After she had surgery to remove the tumor, the patient heard from the voices one last time after regaining consciousness when she heard them say, we are pleased to have helped you. Goodbye. She reported no post-surgical problems and never heard the voice again. The study of a patient diagnosing her own brain tumor with help of mysterious voices in her head was published by the British medical journal, BMJ.